So here's where we're at with the boiler. Uh, the furnace fires, but we have an interesting issue. We have a brand new pressure gauge here that I put on. It's a, it's a zero to five pound gauge. And this thing doesn't really go up much above one, but the pressure valve, which is also brand new, that I just installed, cracks at 15, and the pressure valve has cracked uh, a number of times. So we have, you run it, it runs fine, the radiators get hot, but the pressure valve cracks, and you end up filling the basement with steam. So, obviously we have a uh, an issue here. There's really, inside here is all essentially one space, even though there are chambers, uh, it all needs to be the same pressure by definition. So from back there to all the way back there, same pressure. Why is it one pound here and 15 pounds is cracks over there? One of these devices, either this or that, is lying. Uh, so the only thing that has been suggested that it might be is the pigtail. That this might actually be corroded. If this is full of junk, then indeed... Uh, the cut in uh, or cut out, whatever you want to call that, will not register the appropriate amount of pressure and therefore will not cycle the boiler appropriately and you'll get too much pressure and then that will crack and you'll have steam everywhere. So the thing to do is actually pull this off and see if there's junk inside of it, see if it's clogged. Uh, and then maybe even possibly fabricate new. So, always an adventure for some reason. So I'm going to actually untwist all of this stuff. Going to have to untwist this again, untwist all of that, pull the electrical connections off of it, whatever. And uh, I will let you know what we find. So, here's what we got. We just took apart the uh, the cut in took that had to take that off because whoever installed this installed it too close to uh, to the frame here so you can't untwist it you actually have to dismantle it this was here or you had to cut it or something like that so we just dismantled it and we're obviously going to have to test and make sure that it's working properly after we put it back together okay so we've got the pigtail now, and we got some junk up top here, but what we're really concerned about is what's in there, so I've already loosened this. Just the hands. Just the hands. So we're going to take this out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's clogged. Oh my lord. Let's see here. Look at this, Rob. Wow. A little bit. Both sides are actually clogged. The whole tube's probably clogged. What the heck is that? That's disgusting. That's the dentist drawing stuff and saying let it go back into the furnace. <laughs> right, if we, it, right, it, it, you know, there's an idea and, you know, you can hit this with a compressed air, but you're going to put all that stuff back into the furnace? I, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. All right, has this clogged too? Let's get some... That's clogged? Well... Is it? I'm going to put some light here, hang on. Yeah, that... Oh, goodness. It's not completely clogged, but... There you go. Where it's halfway. I? Where am I? Right there? You got it. It's halfway. <laughs> so, at least we're doing the right thing here, ladies and gentlemen. This is good. <laughs> we're on the right track to not having an explosion. Good. Okay. Well, we're going to clean this out, and we'll replace things as needed, and uh, we'll get back to you. So this is where we're at. We actually took the the bushing out of here, which is this guy. And this is actually an inch socket doesn't even fit on this. We had to get this off of the monkey wrench. Um, so we're actually going to take this down to the deep. I don't know if this is inch or three quarter or what. We're going to try to save it, but I don't want to use it. This, it looks to me like either inch or three quarter NPT. And if it's three quarter or, or inch, then what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of having quarter inch here like it is, we're going to cinch it uh, up down to half inch instead. We'll put a half inch fitting 
we'll curly cue some soft copper up to another half inch fitting and then we can build our uh, cut in and the pressure gauge from there and a, a nice big copper pipe will be less likely to get clogged than uh, than that little guy that we had down there so in here it's still clogged you can see that so we gotta go in there and pull all that clogged stuff out and then we're gonna make this all nice and fresh and new So the boiler's back together and it's running. We're not coming up to pressure yet. It's gonna take a few minutes to actually get pressure in here. But I actually decided to uh, make this whole thing a little bit more convenient. Um, this piece was buried down here and the stack is here so you couldn't untwist it properly. Now it's much easier to maintain, much easier to pull that out of there. As long as there's not a valve in here, it won't clog. Um, we'll also have a gauge here. That way we can determine whether or not you have pressure, excess pressure at the back or the front, and compare the two and get a proper idea as to uh, where you're at. Um, the issue that we were having, of course, was that the front of the, the boiler here was having uh, say one pound of pressure in the back, uh, it would uh, the relief valve would crack, which is technically 15 pounds. So now we have a new pigtail. We're going to call this a DIY pigtail, three eighths copper tube. Um, I'm really hopeful that this will actually work uh, as well, if not better, than the original. Uh, please don't quote me on this. I have absolutely no idea, idea what I'm doing here. I'm not a boiler technician. But uh, this is way more maintainable than the other one would have been. Not to mention uh, easier to fabricate. I have a mechanical union here. So it can actually be uh, pulled apart if need be. So we're just going through the... Uh, the issues that this thing is having one after the other and trying to diagnose them one at a time. The next issue we have to deal with is the water feed mechanism over here is old and so is the low water cutoff and I'm not so sure they're functioning exactly as they should. So that will be the next thing to pay attention to. This boiler will not get used very much. And it looks like we have some pressure coming. The gauge is dancing a little bit. This is a nice looking gauge, a zero to five pound gauge. And since we're only running a pound, pound and a half, maybe two pounds of steam, maybe two pounds, probably shouldn't be up there. But uh, it's really handy to have that kind of a gauge on the system. And I really wish I could have actually turned it upright, but it's really doggone tight in there. So I didn't attempt to, uh, to twist it much further. One day what I can do is you can put a, an extra nipple in there or something and twist it so it actually faces upright. But back here, we're still on zero. So, so far these are in agreement. Good. Coming along. Now we're climbing. We got half a pound of steam. So far so good dancing so much anymore. There she goes. Oh, yeah. What do we got in the back here? Still this is not registering very up. Oh, up, oh, it came off of nothing. Just saw it. Should not see this do very much. 
beauty of a head of steam is once it gets going, it'll go. And hopefully, pretty soon, the boiler is going to shut off. Starts going past the bottom, man. Pound and a half. No, no, it won't pop this. Hang on, look. We got. Dude, it's kind of fast, bro. Yeah, I know. We got. What do you got over there? Back here is about pound and a half. You got two in the front. That switch. That switch got to be adjusted to shut off. No, we don't want it over too long. So let's adjust it. Ah, oh, we don't have to. <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> look at that. All right, we can adjust it down a tad. Yeah, put it down a tad. We're gonna bring it down a tad. <sighs> Problem is, which way is down? It's the same as when you screw something. Um, clockwise is up, counterclockwise is down. All right, it would be helpful do, to have Do it. a counterclockwise, it'll go down. Let's see, counterclockwise, here we go. Quarter of a turn down. I want to see it restart. That's what I want to see. Quarter of a turn down. I want to see it drop and I want to see it restart. I'm going to check the radio to see if they're hot in the room. It's going down. It's going down. Look. Look, it's down to down to about two pounds now. Oh, uh, let's see when it kicks back on. It should kick back on at one. The cut in point is one pound. At least that's what it said. Oh, look at that. It is going down. And the differential's one. So maybe... Well, let's see. But it's going down. Not bad for a couple of guys that know what they're doing. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Man. Different gauge here. Okay. Two pounds here. Well, it's a whole lot better it's than 15. Just, yeah, you need the bigger gauge here because it's more pressure here. It's going to blow. Well, at least, yeah. The, the pressure will be the same. That one, theoretically, when this thing drops that one should be pegged. This one, this one should the, be... The thermostat still said at 70. It's 62 in the house. They should kick it back on when it drops back down to one pound. If it's 62 in the house, and then... The thermostat set at 70. It should call for heat. Right. And it should kick back on when it drops to one pound. So right now we have... Let's do it. It's dropping fast. Bring it over here. Bring it. Bring it. Look, look, look. It's going to kick on. Kick on. Any second. Any second. It kick on. At one pound, it should kick on. Or just below. Let's see. Let's see. Well, we set it, so who knows where it's going to... You know, we own size for one pound. Isn't it? The differential is one, but again, we, we mess with it. So let's see where it kicks back on. Back down to zero. <laughs> Where did it go? How much did it go? Where did it go? Three quarters? Three quarters of a pound. Nice! It won't blow anymore. <laughs> Flame proven. So that means that. What do I do now? Now you gotta watch it. We wanna keep it under two. If it starts going above two, turn this down so it shuts down. Yep. That's what you wanna do. Alright, well, we'll see where it's it goes. too high. You wanna keep it under two. Okay. Two is like that. Well, I, I like the idea of switching the limit on this rather than shutting the whole thing down because then at least the the controller retains power and both the the pressure gauge here or the excuse me the the, the cut in the pressure cut in and the low water cutoff are then attached to the limit control on the controller. So when either of those says to shut the boiler down, the boiler shuts down, but the controller still retains power. I, I, that was just so friggin' confusing to everybody I asked that question to. Do you see these things up here too? They're like these new stuff? Yeah. It's too high. 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 Let's see where this goes see, now. You want to blow? But you got to do it now before it. Hang on. Is it a below two? Below two. You're below two pounds, man. I think that's good to leave it there or should we put it lower? Let's, I I, I'm lower. gonna do you know, counterclockwise, right? Counterclockwise. And watch it again, see where it goes. I'm gonna go upstairs to see where it's An eighth of a turn. That's all that, that I'm gonna do. Alright, I'm gonna go upstairs to check up your radiator. As long as the radiators are hot, you're good, man. I'm gonna take the last one far as something like you said. Yep, yep. As far as I can see, this this project is well on its way. Back here, we're still 
under two pounds, so that's good. So this pressure relief valve will not crack. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. That pigtail was installed. You know, wh whoever did that installed the, the, the pigtail here so that you could not take the pressure gauge, excuse me, to, so you could not take the cut in off without uh, undoing everything. What a pain in the neck. Now we got some nice soft copper here. Uh, can basically put this wherever we need it, make that however big we want to make it. I don't see the harm in making it big. And uh, now the whole unit is maintainable, which is nice. Love maintainable stuff. Just go in, undo it, replace it. So it just cut in again at about half pound. And the differential is set to one. So it'll probably cut out at about one and a half. The higher you set the differential, so if we had the differential set to two, then you have a, um, a much longer duty cycle. Then the burner stays, stays lit for longer, as opposed to if you have a shorter differential or a tighter differential, say half pound, then the burner will stay lit for less time. It came on about half pound. About a half came on. About a half came on. Where, so where, how the radiators? They're all warm. The highest are all here. The closest is the farthest one. So it'll probably take time to second two. Where's it turning off at? One and three quarters. That's a fine duty cycle. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Cool. Tell you what, let's leave, let's leave it as is for tonight. Thanks for watching part two of this video. Don't forget to subscribe.